Isaiah. Can you get to say amen? Let me see by the show of the hand. How many got your Bibles tonight? Anybody come with a Bible? You know, sometimes people don't use Bibles no more. Well, uh, if you don't have your Bible, do you have your cell phone? You know, you can put a cell phone, uh, your Bible in the cell phone these days. So we just thank God for uh, just being here and the Word. All right. In the book of Isaiah, let, let us start. Let us start at um, uh, well, my time is kind of short. Let's start at Isaiah chapter number 51. I'll just go ahead and start at verse number one. Tonight we're going to talk about the cup of fury is being passed. The cup of fury is being passed. Father, we thank you for your word. Speak to us and we will be fed. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Scripture says, hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord. Look upon the rock whence ye are hewn. So the Lord has hewn us out of a rock. And to the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. So he's talking about uh, people that have been done uh, terribly and wrong and, and, you know, almost at the lowest of a low. You know, a pit is below the ground. A pit is below the ground. You know, you, when, when you are in a pit, you're at the lowest of the low. So he's talking to the lowest of mostly armed people. And he's telling us in verse 2, Look unto Abraham your father and unto Sarah that bear you, uh, for I call him alone and blessed him and increased him. So we find that when God spoke to Abraham in Isaiah, uh, uh, not Isaiah, but in the book of Genesis chapter number 15, he told him that uh, he was going to sojourn in a strange land and that he was going to be in captivity and, and the nation that uh, came against him, he was going to judge. So uh, it's a lot of things is happening very rapidly at the close of this year of 2018. A lot of stuff going on. I mean, it's almost like a domino effect. And what we have seen, we have seen uh, this thing kind of building up. Uh, you know, um, I often talk about the uh, birthing pains. Uh, look like we're getting close to the delivery of the child, uh, things are, are welling up. So uh, in Isaiah, he's going all the way back to Abraham and bringing him all the way through the end. That's why I love the Old Testament. The Old Testament, it kind of speaks in a prophetic sense, uh, but, but you have to be in tune. You have to know uh, who is who in the Bible and who is who in the world to be able to fully understand uh, uh, the Bible and eschatology, eschatology being the teaching of the, the last days, the end of the world, and that's what we are. We are in the last days. We are coming up into the finalization of, uh, uh, of this dispensation. Some people don't believe in dispensations, but it's kind of a, a good way to view things. We are going into another dispensation. I would call it the dispensation of the kingdom. All right, in verse number three, it says, for the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. Uh, and he will make her wilderness like Eden. And her desert like the gording of, of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein. Thanksgiving and the voice of melody. So the voice of melody means that. It's going to be harmony. You know, when you make a, a beautiful melody, melody, it has to be harmonized. Those of us that, that study music or play music, some notes don't go with other notes. Some other notes will make a clash or make a terrible sound, uh, uh, augmented and, and different kind of um, just off-key. 
but, but God is getting ready to blend these things. And when you make melody, things have to be blended. So uh, we are preparing to be blended. Now, uh, those of you that really pay attention to uh, what I teach from time to time, you know that uh, uh, my ideology is that it is during this time, during the time of the passing of the cup, during the time of the finalization of, of, of the troubles and the trials and testing, is where the people of God uh, are going to have to blend, or where we're going to have to come together, where we're going to have to understand that we got to start speaking the same thing now. We, we got to start recognizing that we cannot have all these multiple divisions of, of understanding and understanding this way and that way, but we got to understand that God is getting ready to come and deliver us and take us uh, into our blessing land. Uh, so we're going to have to uh, be made to understand that all the, the tests and trials and troubles that we went through uh, have led us up to this time. So uh, we shouldn't be so sad and despondent because things are, are, are you know, getting ready to be turned uh, back into the rightful place because it, they've been upside down all the time. We have been taught things uh, the wrong way for so long uh, until people, when you start uh, uh, teaching it to them the right way, they start going through a, a grievous mode in life. They start to experience uh, cognitive uh, dissonance. They, they start to, to have that terrible feeling down on the inside to, to know that I have believed this thing in the wrong way for all this long time. Now it's being revealed in another way. So they're going to suffer mentally. All right, it says, verse 3, For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He shall comfort all her waste places. Uh, so in other words, every place that we have been wasted, our ghettos, you know, uh, uh, we, we, uh, we are in a place of, uh, of abusement. We have been abused all down through the years. But the Lord said, I'm going to bring comfort to you. And he will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. So that's where we want to, to start coming together in our ideology. That's why I had to, you know, I had to, to start teaching from this pers perspective because that's where the world is going. The, the trend is, is, is coming to a culmination of the end. And, and if you don't know what time that you're in, you might be left on the wrong side. Because you don't understand the time. Verse number four says, Hearken unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation, for the law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of my people. So uh, uh, the Lord uh, is getting ready to even things out. Uh, I believe it's a scripture that's talked about, let the uh, high places be made, uh, plain and uh, let the valleys be exalted you know, and then let it be a highway so so God getting ready to level these things out Think somebody that's too high got to come down those that's too low you got to come up God getting ready to level this thing off so we can't be uplifted in our mind all these folk that think they got so much money and they got it going on God getting ready to bring you down and we see it happening right now in the economy Things are happening. A turn is taking place, and they're talking like it ain't going to be no bailout this time that can handle what's getting ready to come. You know, uh, you all remember some years ago, what was that? Uh, was it 20? Uh, I don't remember the year, but they held uh, the country hostage, and they said, unless you all come up with $750 billion, you're going to have martial law in the streets. And, and it's going to be total chaos. Do you, anybody in here remember that? When they, when they demanded this large sum of money, and then the question was asked, well, where, where's the money going to? What, what y'all do with all these billions of dollars? And they say, we don't have to tell you. We ain't going to tell you that. So that lets you know that there is a, 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 a dark government. There is a, 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 a government beyond the government. 
You know, there's a secret society. That's where the money went. It, it went into all other areas of where the people, the puppet masters got that money. Because when you know and dig into politics, you know that politics is not really true politics. They're just puppets and somebody's behind the scene uh, that's controlling them and telling them what to do. If you all re recall, before our President Trump came into office, they gave him a show called The Apprentice. Do you all remember that? And what was he doing on The Apprentice? He was firing everybody. You're fired. Every time you look around, you're fired. Well, what was he? He was an apprentice for the job that he's doing right now. He's firing people. He's causing disruption. And he's taking the country into total chaos. And, and they, they primed him and groomed him for that. And, 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 he, and they did a good job. See, the, the, what we're dealing with is beyond natural knowledge. These people, they, they work in the spirit of divinity or um, familiar kind of spirit. They're wizards. They work in, in spirits that, that are, are, are deep and dark, the kind of spirit that the Lord warned us about. That, uh, don't let nobody uh, pull you into necromancy, which is, you know, talking to the dead and familiar spirits. Anybody that's dealing in familiar spirits, have to be put to death. Well, uh, a lot of our governmental people, that's what they deal in. That's how they're able to uh, maneuver and, and bring these things to pass because they're working with spirits. You can't, you can't be working with out of your, your, your own mind. They've had hundreds of years for uh, planning this. Their plan is not just uh, something that they thought up automatically. They, they got an individual by the name of Albert Pike. He's gone on, he's passed on, but he was a Freemason. Uh, as a matter of fact, he was one of the top-notch Freemasonries. And he predicted practically every war, the, the, every war that we've been in, every major war, the First World War, Second uh, World War, and now the coming Third World War. He even talked about it and how it was to be developed. So we think that the wars were being fought because of a need for humanity, but uh, behind the scenes, somebody was making billions of dollars in every last one of those wars at the, uh, uh, at the uh, mercy of all those innocent lives that had been uh, killed and taken. All right, let me move on. Um, it says, uh, verse number five, my judgment is near. I mean, excuse me, my righteousness is near and, and my salvation is gone forth and mine arm shall judge the people. The isles shall wait upon me and on mine arm shall they trust. So uh, the Lord says that his righteousness is near. Those of us that, that, that believe in him, we know that you can't uh, see the Lord. The Bible says, uh, follow peace with all men and what? Holiness without. without. Shall you see the Lord? So you can't see the Lord without holiness. So the Lord said, my righteousness is near and my salvation is going forth and mine arm shall judge the people. The isles shall wait upon me and on mine arm shall they rest. So we have a, a situation where people all over the world uh, uh, that are children of God are waiting for their delivery. Somebody say amen. amen. They're waiting for their deliverance uh, all over the world. Verse 6, lift up your eyes to the heavens and look upon the earth beneath, for the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment, and they should, that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. So this is talking about an event that, that hasn't happened yet. That's why I love uh, the, uh, the Old Testament. It speaks prophetically. It's talking about the heavens going up in smoke, and it's talking about all the, the judgments that's going to fall on the earth that's, that we must be preparing for right now. All right, verse 7 says, Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear ye not 
the approach, reproach of men, neither be ye afraid of the reveling. So a lot of stuff's getting ready to, to, to jump on. I know y'all seen those movies, The Purge, The First Purge and all that, where they're they just, uh, just going crazy in the earth. Well, a lot of that kind of activity is getting ready to jump on. Uh, anytime you have a uh, major unrest, anytime you have a shortage of food, money, and, and, and it's scarce and everything, you, you got total chaos. And don't let them impeach uh, Trump. You're going to really see rioting in the streets. If they Im impeach him, and it look like they're setting the, the groundwork for that. I believe the government, is the government shut down right now? I believe the government is shut down right now. So pretty much they're, they're talking about it. You know, and the argument is supposed to be, if you don't give me my money to finish my wall, I'm shutting the government down. It's like a spoiled brat. You know, but, but that's a way, uh, at the same time, for them to allow their devious acts to take place. Now, while they're talking about the, the wall not being built, somebody on the other end is talking about ISIS and another 9-11. You know, they talking crazy like this. So I'm hearing sublineal messages uh, sound like a false flag, a big false flag getting ready to jump off. And they're planning it. And don't, you, don't they know that we already know that 9-11 was, was perpetrated by our own government? So, so you know, we are supposed to be so dumbed down and so naive that we don't know what's really going on. But, but uh, fasten your seat belts because something is getting ready to jump off in the country and around the world. All right. Uh, let me read verse 7 again. Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness. The people in whose heart is my law, fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be ye afraid of their revelings. Uh, uh, so we can't be afraid of what's getting ready to happen. You know, I, I talk to quite a few people. Some of them say, that, well, I, got, I had to go out and buy me a weapon, and I had to, you know, but you ain't going to have enough bullets to, you know, bullets cost too much money. You don't have to buy something to eat and place the bullets. I, what you want to eat? You, can you eat bullets? No, I want something to eat. Come on, give God praise. Verse, verse number eight. You know, aren't you glad for verse seven, though? Let me back up and read it again. Hearken unto me. So we got to hearken unto the Lord. It's time for us to humble ourselves and hearken unto the Lord. Stop uh, uh, fussing with everybody. Stop being so divided amongst ourselves as a people. Uh, we know that they have con contaminated all religions, all religions was contaminated on purpose. They, they infused all religions with all type of paganism. Amen. Come on, somebody. And, and that, that allows, that, that causes people to suffer from cognitive dissonance too when they find out, oh, you mean to tell me what I'm doing is really not of God? I dine them Easter eggs on Easter and... And, 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 and doing all this stuff with, with these pagan uh, 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 beliefs, yes. When you find out that they was doing that before Christ even was born. So, but they found a way to infuse it and tried to make it into his resurrection. But you've been doing the eggs all the way from back in Nimrod's day. So, so uh, uh, if we did deny it or turn our head and act like it's, it's not there and continue to do it, at least we can acknowledge that, yeah, this is wrong according to the word of God. Amen. At least acknowledge it. Exactly. Amen? Amen? Verse number eight. For the moth have eat up like a garment, and the worm shall eat them like wool, and, but my righteousness shall be forever, and my salvation from generation to generation. So even though the moth, moth is tearing up stuff and the worms eating up stuff and all look like uh, everything we get is dissolved some kind of way, you're taking uh, two steps forward and three steps back, you know, look like you can't get ahead. God, is gonna, God got us on that. Can I get a witness? Amen. But we got to hearken unto him. Verse number nine, awake, awake. Look on somebody, tell yourself somebody to wake up. See, that, that's uh, what I call uh, um, my, my uh, channel, Awake, he Wake Up Hebrews. 
I'm trying to wake up our people. trying to wake us up because a lot of us are still asleep. Awake, awake. Put on strength. O arm of the Lord, awake as in, in the ancient days, in the generations of old. Are thou not of that hath cut Rahab and wounded the dragon? You remember when Rahab, you know, when the, uh, the thieves, well not the thieves, the spies came through. The spies. Not thieves. They weren't thieves. They were spies. And uh, Rahab hid the spies. Y'all remember that? They went up on the roof and she covered them with flax. But she lowered a, a, a scarlet cord down the window for them to escape. So, so that's a signification that we're going to have to get back to the blood. You know, a lot of, a lot of folks are not talking about the blood. A lot of uh, uh, believers and people of God, Hebrews or whoever, they, don't, they, they hardly speak anything on the blood. But we got to have it. Verse number 10. Are thou not it which have dried the sea, the waters of the great deep, have, uh, that have made the depths of the sea a way for the ransom to pass over? So now it's commemorating all the times that the Lord have delivered his people. Uh, he allowed the, uh, the two spies to get away. To, to escape, and, and then also uh, he allowed the children of Israel to escape, to escape on dry land, so he's commemorating his faithfulness to his people. So why should we be afraid and not believe that he's able to deliver us? In our time of despair, and in our time uh, of, of restitution, verse 11, therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return. And come with singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow of mourning shall flee away. So that's why I say we got to start lifting up our head. We got to start magnifying the Lord. We got to start praising the Lord. Stop coming to church with your head hung down. Stop being so sad because the Lord getting ready to deliver us. Did you know that, that many wars were won by the children of God because of praise? They were, they were dumbfound the enemy with praise. The, uh, you remember how they won the battle? Gideon won the battle. They went up on the mountainside with trumpets and pitchers with lights in them. And they broke the pitchers and blew the trumpets and scared the folk half to death. Scared the people and they started killing one another. So, so we, we are the children of God. We can't stop praising them. So that's why, the, you know, they make mockery of the church and say they're doing all that singing and buck dance and doing all this stuff. Well, uh, uh, you can't take that away. Maybe they are fake. Maybe those are the fake ones. But you got some real praises. You got some real worship. What you going to do with them? You going to throw everybody away because you got some homosexuals up there shouting real fast. No, you got some true people that really love God that worship him for real. So you're going to throw everything away. Judah is known for praise. Come on, give God glory, somebody. All right. Verse number 12. I, even I, am he that comforts you. Who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die? And the son of man which shall be made as grass. So he's letting us know, you don't be scared of these folk. They ain't going to have to die. I'm getting ready to come in and wipe them out. Sometimes we so afraid. We, ooh, ooh, they, they, they got guns. They got this, that. God can raise you up. They can kill you and God will raise you right back up. Come on, give God praise. Let me read that again. I like that verse. I, even I, am he that comforted you. Who art thou that thou should be afraid of a man that shall die, and of the son of a man which shall be made as grass? So God going to take care of our enemy. But we got to trust in him. We got to get in him. We got to hearken unto him. We got to humble ourselves unto him and get in him for real. Stop playing. Stop playing, Zion. Don't throw the church away because that's what he's coming back for. Yeah, it's some messed up stuff in the church, but he's going to destroy that too. He's going to destroy that too. But if you're on the outside of the church, you ain't, gonna, you ain't got no blood applied. 
Let me read on. Verse 13. And forget it the Lord thy maker that have stretched forth the heaven and laid the foundations of the earth and have feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressors as if he were ready to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? So the Lord is letting you know you're more afraid of him than you am of me. You need to be fearing me. When the Lord put one scripture in there and say, don't fear the man that can destroy your, your body, but fear him that can destroy both soul and body and cast it into hell. Stop being so afraid. Stop being so afraid of dying. Where y'all at? Amen. You can't even be afraid of, of dying because you're going to have to do it one day. But the Bible promised us life beyond the grave. Oh, let me move on a little bit further. Verse 14, the captive exile hasteneth uh, that he may be loose and that he should not die in the pit nor that his bread should fail. So some people, you know, you can't, you can't be so big on trusting in what's going on in this life. Now, now I will say that don't mean that you don't need to have any kind of resources in your house. Yeah, go and buy you a bunch of tuna and some mayonnaise and some, some relish and stock it up in the basement. Get you some jugs of water and stuff. Come on, somebody. What's wrong with that? The five wise and the five foolish. They, you, you know, you better go try to find you something to eat. Don't be coming over there. You got any left? <laughs> Hallelujah. There ain't nothing wrong with stocking up. That's what Joseph did uh, for, for, for the Pharaoh. He taught him how to, now you, you in the years of plenty, you got to stock up. Now, the preppers got us on that. Come on, somebody. Yeah, they do. Now, what if the lights go out like they've been talking? Now, you know, it's going to be a blackout. I, say, I can see folk now. Oh, it's dark. I can't see nothing. My freezer don't work. All my food is spoiled. Hurry, I'm cook that chicken before it go bad. Come on, somebody. You better learn how to, you know, get you a wood burning stove. That's right. And get you some logs. Amen. What's wrong with that? No. We too, you know, the city that messed us up. Amen. I remember my grandma and them, they was canning. They knew how to can stuff. And, and it didn't last long. You don't need no refrigerator. And sometimes it's so good, you can eat it straight out the can. They had them jars with the sealed top on it. Sometimes they put wax on the top of it and then put a seal, a uh, uh, top on the top of that. And it lasts a long time. What are those folks? These folks don't know nothing. All they know about them is go stop at McDonald's. Pull over the White House. I got a taste for some church's chicken. You know, that's all y'all just, everybody just messed up. Just, uh, no, 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 I don't want no churches today. Let's get some Popeye. Because I like their biscuits. Their biscuits is nice and buttery. Now, come on, give God praise. You don't know how to do nothing. You don't know. You be depending on them for everything. Don't know how to plant nothing. Don't know how to grow nothing. Ain't got, you say, oh, that's dirty. I ain't putting my hands in that dirt. Well, the food come out the dirt. Potatoes come out the ground. Carrots come out the ground. Come on, somebody. Turnips come out the ground. Talking about you don't want to get your hands dirty. Yeah. <laughs> come on, give God praise. Well, let me come on in for a landing because it's getting good. Verse 15 said, But I am the Lord thy God that divided the sea. Whose ways roll? The Lord of hosts is his name. So the Lord said, Look at me. Stop looking at all these folk and being afraid of all of them. Look at me. I'm the Lord. Verse 16. And I have put my words in thy mouth. And I have covered thee in the shadow of mine hand. That I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth. And say unto Zion, thou art my people. We got to start trusting in the Lord. And stop depending on all this stuff out here. 
Now he's telling us, awake. Somebody say, awake. Awake, awake up, people of God. Awake. Awake. Stand up, O Jerusalem, which has drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury. Now, that's what, that's what we're talking about. The cup is being passed. We have gotten full off the cup. The Lord has punished us. We're coming to an end of our punishment. Come on, somebody. But some of us have gotten used to punishment. You think everything, you know, every time you, we used to be so scared, every time they call our name, we thought we was getting ready to get a whooping. Our parents were so mean. They call you, you know, what I did not, what I do. They, you know, that, that's how we got the Lord in our mind. You know, that it, oh, the Lord, the Lord is mean. He on the throne, throwing lightning bolts down and killing everybody. No, but we got to understand. He's saying, awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem, which has drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury. The Lord, he's, he has punished us because of what our forefathers did. Thou hast drunken the dregs of the cup of trembling and wrung them out. So the Lord, he done got, he, he's about, our chastisement is about at the end. Do I have anybody that's with me? Our chastisement is about coming to an end now. So he's trying to tell us to wake up. So, because we so drunk and with his fury and think that we're going to be punished forever, and we, we so deep into what we are in our pain and in our suffering that we can't even receive the deliverance that he's getting ready to, to bring to us. Verse number 18. There is none to guide her among all the sons whom she has brought forth. Neither is there any that taketh her by the hand of all the sons that she shall be brought up. So we ain't got nobody to look to. We don't have anybody. They're killing up all the men. The women, they ain't got so discouraged. Now, they, 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 they forget the men. They looking at them like they dirt. And they, they love us with each other. Where y'all at? That's against the Lord. That you in trouble. The Lord said, I didn't, I didn't tell y'all to do that. Because I didn't punish the men. Because the men locked up in jail. Because the half of them want to be sissies. In fact, is that word allowed? Did I mess up? Well, homosexual. Come on, somebody. I didn't tell y'all to become one too. There is none to guide her among all her sons whom she has brought forth. Neither is there any that take her by the hand of all the sons that she has brought up. So, so ain't nobody, we, we don't have anybody to look to but our father. Verse 19, these two things are come unto thee. Who shall be sorry for thee? Desolation and destruction and the famine and the sword. By uh, whom shall I comfort thee? So, so the Lord is getting ready to pass all this to the folk that oppressed us. Are uh, you thought that, that all the stuff that was done to us was, was just going to be forgotten about? Like they always tell you, oh, that's in the past. Forget about that. Why y'all living in the past? Well, God, he ain't forgot about it. He wrote it in his Bible. Come on, give God praise. Verse number 20. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets and the wild bull in a net. They are full of fury of the Lord, the rebuke of thy God. Now listen to this. Therefore, hear now this, thou afflicted and drunken. Be not with wine, thus said the Lord of thy, uh, the Lord of the Lord. Uh, the, the God and thy God that pleaded the cause of his people. Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling, and even the dregs of the cup of my fury, thou shalt no more drink it again. So the Lord is letting us know that our pain and suffering is over. You know, we, we so messed up and so out of whack and, you know, going crazy and buck wild until uh, the Lord's got to shake us. You know how somebody, they, they, you got to shake them. Come, come out of it. Come to yourself. 
That's what the Lord is trying to do to us right now. Come to your senses. He said, I I'm getting ready to turn it around. I'm getting ready to take this cup out of your hand. Some of us holding the cup so tight, won't even let it go. He's trying to pull the cup out your hand. Come on, give me the cup. You, you, you trying to take another drink. Give me the cup. Thus said the Lord of the Lord uh, and thy God that pleaded the cause of his people. Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again. But this is the, the one that I want y'all to take home with you. Verse 23. But I will put it into the hands of them that afflict thee. I'm taking that cup out of your hand and I'm giving it to the folk that have been messing over you all the time. So you better wake up, repent, get right. Stop messing around. The homos, stop being homos. Uh, lesbians, stop being lesbians. I'm getting ready to do something here. If y'all don't stop, you're going to have to line up and drink the cup all over again. You're going to have to drink it twice. That's why he keeps telling us to awake. Awake, awake, my people. Let me read verse 23 because it's almost time to go. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, which have said in thy soul, bow down that we may go over. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground and as the street to, to them that went over. And you know, we, we went out of our way. Yeah, master, yeah, master. You know, and some of us even today, when, 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 when uh, the white folk come around, you change the way you talk. You start putting a lot of auras in. Yeah, yeah, uh, 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 and you start talking all crazy. You keep on talking the way you've been talking. I want to sound black. I want to sound like who I am. I ain't got, I ain't got the, you know, all, all them auras. Aura, aura, aura. Changing the way you talk out there around you. Because he said, bow down that we may go over. And thou hast laid the body on the ground. You just laying on down. There. You can walk on me. No, you ain't walking on me. Come on, give God praise. So the cup is being passed. We in the midst of the passing of the cup. Are you going to clinch to it and continue to hold it like, like uh, you know, uh, we can't be delivered? Chapter 52, verse uh, 1, awake, awake. He's still trying to wake us up. We in the age of awakening. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For whence there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. So God getting ready to set us up like we're supposed to be set up. Come on, give God praise. All right, some of y'all may not, you know, some folk out there looking at me with, with, with the twisted lip. Like I don't know what I'm talking about. But you're going to see, they still clinching to the cup. But turn the cup loose. Let the cup of fury go. He's trying to take it out of our hand. But we got to prepare ourselves. We got to repent. We got to clean up our life. We got to get back in line. We got to line up. We got to be like the church of Philadelphia that he was pleased with. By the way, you telling them to come out of that church too? Since you said come out of them churches, they supposed to come out of the church of Philadelphia? They coming out of that church too? Well, what you going to do with that one? Since you say come out of the church. Come on, give God praise. All right. I'm going to stop right here. I hope y'all got something out of what, what we're talking about. But my message to you tonight is the cup is being switched. You know, he's getting ready to switch the cup. God getting ready to take that cup of fury out of your hand and put it into the hand of those that have afflicted us. Come on, give God praise.
All right, we thank the Lord for another Bible study. We so happy, uh, you know, like like well, during this time of the year. Let me uh, explain this, cause some people probably don't understand. We ain't we ain't telling you to be somewhere in a, a little dark room and sad. We don't do nothing no more. You know how people. <laughs> See, I don't, I, don't, I don't know about that. You can still go over your family's house. If your family having a, a, a gathering and, uh, you know, go on, on over there and eat whatever they got, turkey and dressing. Well, you know, uh, we didn't have turkey. We had barbecue. Uh, 